Hey, what is up, mortals? It is TC Crew here, and welcome to part 7 of What If Deku Was Evil. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So we begin. The battered body of Stain weighed heavy in Izuku's mind. What if he didn't recover? What if he was out of the fight permanently? What if he... died? He tossed and turned all night, unable to fall asleep without having nightmares of the night of the mission. Endeavor's scorching flames, Stain being knocked into the building, the horrific burns that covered a large portion of his body. Still, in his beaten state, Stain was a tough and efficient teacher, surprising for a man who had never taken an apprentice. Being self-taught, he must have picked up tips and tricks that a lot of people never considered learning. Izuku eventually dozed off into a dreamless sleep, the exhaustion of the training and worrying finally overwhelming his nightmares. When he woke up, Stain was still fast asleep. Izuku stretched and grabbed his staff, but as he headed to the door, Stain's raspy voice surprised him. Izuku, water. Izuku could barely understand him, his words were so full of pain. Izuku rushed to the kitchen and filled one of the old metal cups with ice and water, bringing it to the bedside. Stain reached out and took the cup, gulping it down thirstily. He coughed a little, but before sighing and laying back down, Izuku stood quietly, waiting on whatever Stain might need. My throat feels like I've inhaled flames. Stain said, his voice still raspy. He chuckled. I guess technically I did. Go on, kid. Grab your stuff and go out and train. I'll be okay. Are you sure, Stain? I can take the day off, help you recover faster, so we can... Izuku trailed off. He didn't know what the next move was. If there even was a next move. I'll be alright, Izuku. You need to train while I lay here and figure out what we're going to do next. These words brought a small feeling of joy to Izuku. There would be a next plan. Another attempt to knock the heroes from their high pedestal. He picked his staff back up and left the cabin, stepping out into the frigid morning air. There was a light dusting of frost on the grass and the birds had just begun their singing. Izuku took in the morning scenery and then walked to the tree where he had been training. He visualized Stain from the night before, his stance, his movements, and he began planning his attack patterns. Middle swing to a low thrust, a fainted overhead, turning the staff and striking the temple with the other side. He even practiced running at his target, grabbing a handful of dirt and throwing it before attacking to stimulate his distraction technique. Stain watched from the window, observing the kid's movements. He was fast, and his attacks carried weight and power but he was still lacking the killer instinct that truly made a warrior. Was it his age, his lack of training, his lack of real world experience? It didn't matter, he would gain all of these with time, assuming he survived. Stain hoped he would survive. Someone needed to carry on his legacy, his mission and his creed. After the run in with Endeavor, he wasn't sure how much longer he would live. Izuku trained until the sun was high and his body wouldn't move anymore. He felt onto the grass and stared up at the trees above him, the afternoon light dancing through the leaves. Not only did he need to work on his fighting skills, he needed to train his body to endure prolonged operations. He also needed to improve his survival and reconnaissance skills. If he ever hoped to operate outside of Stain's guiding hand, he was overwhelmed by the amount of work he would need to put in to get where he wanted to be. Quirkless. The word rang out in his mind. That alone made his entire goal feel unreachable. The loud growl of his stomach pulled him from his train of thought. He forgot to grab breakfast before training, and now he was starving. Izuku pushed himself from the grass, turning to see Stain leaning on the doorway, watching him intently. He shook a brown paper bag. You forgot your lunch, dear. Stain chuckled. But honestly, you shouldn't train on an empty stomach. It's not good for your body or your mind. And you'll notice you're slower. Izuku ran to the stairs and grabbed the bag from Stain. The Stain was a basic lunch. A ham sandwich, a banana, and a bottle of water. Hardly a lavish lunch, but it would be enough to keep his energy up and his stomach from growling. He sat on the stairs and ate his lunch, enjoying the warm sun and feeling of freedom. A life without strict rules or times. He did pretty much what he wanted. The weeks passed by quickly, with Izuku training and taking care of Stain, and as Stain's strength recovered, he began to join Izuku in the training. At first, it was only common suggestions on Izuku's fighting style. Sometimes Stain would sit in the shade of the trees and meditate. Izuku asked him once what he was thinking about, 
and only got a small smirk. One day I'll tell you. Uh, I don't think you would understand just yet. The wounds on Stain finally healed, and he grained all of his strength. It was time to test the kid again. If his prediction was correct, he would be more than ready for the test he had devised for him. They woke up early, just as the sun was barely peeking above the horizon. Stain grabbed his gear and put it on, and told Izuku to do the same. What are we gearing up for? Izuku was excited for the new mission, but in the early morning, would they not be spotted? We're going to fight, but this time we're going to do it as if our lives depended on it. You need to experience the adrenaline and tactics that come with real world situations. Stain glared at Izuku from behind his mask. Izuku felt his blood turn to ice. An actual fight? As if his life depended on it? What if he wasn't ready? His hands were shaking as he was putting on his gear and grabbed his staff. Would Stain really kill him? Not sure. What if he did? They stepped outside and made their way to the clearing that they had trained in so many times before. They took their positions across from each other, and the training began. Stain drew his sword and assumed his fighting stance. Izuku held his staff in front of him. The tip pointed at Stain's forehead. Stain had given him this tip during training, saying that if he kept his weapon pointed at his target, it would be harder for them to predict feints, and therefore easier for him to land blows. Begin, Stain said coldly, before seemingly vanishing from Izuku's eyes. Izuku's adrenaline instantly kicked in, his eyes scanning around him, looking for any sign of where Stain might have gone. He had no idea where he was. He had no idea he was this fast when he wanted to be. Then he saw it. A small amount of grass kicked up from the ground to his right. Moving rapidly behind him, he waited, forcing himself to pretend he didn't see the movement. If they knew he was onto him, he might change his tactics and catch him off guard. He heard the soft crunch of the frosty grass behind him. Behind you! Stain's attempted surprise attack was cut short as Izuku spun around quickly, ducking and swinging his staff at Stain's knee. Stain was not prepared for the quick reactions, barely managing to block the low strike. Izuku quickly swung the other end of his staff up, aiming for Stain's non-dominant arm. Stain leapt back, the whistle of the staff barely missing him. Izuku wasted no time in continuing his assault, rising up and throwing a small rock at Stain. Stain distinctively covered his eyes, expecting the usual dirt and grass trick Izuku had used many times before. The rock bounced off him harmlessly, but when he dropped his hand, Izuku was gone. He looked around wildly, completely bewildered by the new tactics the kid was using. Behind you, Izuku said quietly, before slamming his staff into Stain's exposed back. The sudden force slamming him knocked Stain onto his face, but Izuku was fighting for his life, as he was told. He wasted no time in bringing his staff down hard, aiming towards the back of Stain's head. But Stain's fighting instinct saved him, as he rolled to the side, just in time to avoid a fatal strike. He slashed out with his blade when something bizarre happened. Izuku caught the blade with his hand. It cut deep into the fleshy part of his palm, but he didn't let go. He drove his knee hard into Stain's face, snapping his head back. He grabbed Stain by his hair with his free hand and kneed him again. If you can't get your blade to your mouth to taste the blood, you can't paralyze me. It hurts, but I won't lose again. Izuku said through gritted teeth. Izuku pulled back for another knee, but Stain let go of the sword, grabbing Izuku's leg and sweeping him off his feet. He grabbed the kid by his throat and threw a hard punch for his nose, but he was still stunned from the knees and the sudden change in pace of the fight and Izuku slipped past the punch, catching Stain's arm and using his knee to throw Stain over him. He rolled over and grabbed Stain's blade. The weapon fell foreign in his hand, lighter than his staff, and the handle didn't sit well in his palm. He quickly pointed the tip at Stain's throat. Surrender, or I'll kill you, Izuku said, out of breath and shaking with adrenaline. Stain held his hands up. Good job, kid, you win. But Izuku didn't lower his weapon. What if this was a trick? How could he know? No, seriously, you beat me fair and square. I'm honestly impressed. Your fighting skills and tactics have improved massively since last time. You might be able to even give a pro hero a run for his money. Stain slowly stood up, his hand still raised. The bloody tip of the sword followed Stain as he stood up. Stain was gone in an instant. Confused as to how someone so beaten could still move so fast, he looked everywhere but couldn't find him. Izuku! Stain's voice rang out from the doorway of the cabin. I'm 100% serious. You won. Come on, get some food. Let's plan our next training. Maybe start bandaging up that gashed hand. 
Izuku looked down at the large gash in his hand and suddenly felt dizzy. As the adrenaline began to wear off, a searing pain spread through his arm. He rushed quickly to the cabin. Stain showed him how to properly disinfect and bandage a wound, as well as how to make sure nothing important like nerve endings were severed. After his wound had been bandaged, they sat down to talk about what other training Izuku needed. It's not enough to be able to fight. When you're in the field, you need to know how to move unseen, find food and, and take care of any injuries or damaged equipment that may arise. These things won't be as hard, as it's mostly memory and repetition. I say we give it another week, for the city to calm down and for both of our wounds to completely heal. After that's all finished, and I think you're ready for it. We'll start making more runs into the city to gather information and decide on our next target. They ate a small dinner in peace and Izuku went to bed feeling better than he had ever felt since he left home. Thank you for indulging yourselves in the story thus far, I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, we've got a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes deep into the facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your weave knowledge for all kinds of series, guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We The Slash The Naruto What Ifs. It's what we do on this channel already, but in the vast world and lore of Naruto. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action. Secondly, on behalf of Weedy Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at Weedy Celestials, then I would like to extend out an invitation to join the team. The only caveat being, we only accept members 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interests by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. Our Discord is an all around fantastic place to be, whether you're a fan or looking to join our band of misfits, we're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video, so thank you all for watching and have a great day.